Good evening, friends. 426 in your hymn books. I would like to sing Victory in Jesus. I want you guys to sing with me. participating with me. All right, in the red book, 333, I'll fly away. We're going to do the first and third. I'd like you to sing that one with me too. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away. To a home on God's celestial shore, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away To a land where joy shall never end I'll fly away I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away When I die, hallelujah 
hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Brother Keith. Don't call me sir, I work for a living. <laughs> All right, we'll go over our announcement sheet and then our prayer list. <clears throat> and then we're going to finish up um, uh, the winter Bible study on um, the three examples that Jesus uh, gave um, on um, giving alms and praying and um fasting. Uh, for our announcements, just uh, as a reminder, um, Jack Mullins, which is uh, Charles Tankersley's uh, brother-in-law, um, the visitation is going on right now at uh, Lane Southcrest, and uh, that funeral will be tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, at Lane Southcrest Chapel, and then the burial will be at Chattanooga National a cemetery, um, and um, a couple of our, um, I think Jerry Waters is supposed to be an honorary pallbearer, and so that's why he's not here tonight, so he's at visitation, um, just to remember this family in prayer. Uh, Saturday morning at 8.30 uh, will be our uh, monthly men's prayer breakfast in the family center, and then Tuesday of next week at 11.30 uh, for the senior adults. Uh, joy makers in the family center and then a week from this Saturday will be the senior adult Valentine luncheon and that will also be in the family center and there are several uh, announcements on your announcement sheet we will we will not read over them but I believe they are all in order um, with one exception uh, we had to delay the VBS uh, planning meeting from last Sunday because the material hadn't arrived so we have moved that to the last Sunday afternoon and uh, next month February all right and by the way this is the last day of January so whatever you were going to do in January uh, 2024 I hope you got it all done or time's running out okay for our prayer list uh, Marty Hutto is probably en route uh, from the memorial at Fort Oglethorpe, uh, downtown memorial. Um, Brother Jimmy is, is, has been waiting on the ambulance to pick her up, to transfer her, and I understand that the doctor at the hospital in Fort Oglethorpe was concerned about her right lung, and so that's probably why they are uh, transferring her downtown. And... Um, I asked Brother Mark if he would mind going and being at the hospital downtown when the ambulance arrives. Uh, so that's where Brother Mark is. And so hopefully I'll get an update um, after our service tonight. Uh, James Fry had, or Fish Fry had an ejection this week. Uh, he's here, but remember him in prayer. Uh, Bill Lowry uh, went back to the doctor uh, Monday and... Um, he is still having some uh, sinus and uh, ear problems. Um, also, I've added uh, Brenda Kreger on the prayer list. Uh, she has a personal need. Uh, Gary and Suzanne Young and Isla Tucker uh, Brown, uh, if you'll remember her. And, all, all, and as well, those that are at the nursing home and assisted living, uh, Teresa Ware, uh, Carolyn Portwood, Mary Belcher, Billy Cohen, uh, Elaine Pruitt, uh, Mary Smothers, and also remember uh, Carrie uh, with um, medical uh, at home. All right, are there any updates? I'm sorry, go ahead. She told me this afternoon to take her off uh, she had asked uh, a personal question about Maldi, and I didn't have the answer, so I, I responded to her and just told her what little bit I knew. And she says, uh, and I told her we had, ha, have had her on the prayer list, and she said she had COVID 
and she's over COVID, and she said I could remove her from the prayer list. All right? All right. Anyone else? Okay. Okay. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Over here. That's O'Rourke, right? Just once again, R O. Oh, okay. Got it. All right. Anyone else? Jordan, are you hot? Huh? Okay. <laughs> Unspoken, if you raise your hand. Uh, there was a uh, uh, alert that went out from the school system this week. Uh, um, there was, after they investigated it, it was not a real threat, uh, but uh, uh, Catoosa County uh, Sheriff's Office did not wait to respond. They responded immediately. They were on station, and uh, we need to be thankful that uh, we live in a county where they are keeping track on what goes on in the school system, keeping our children and the staff uh, safe. Um, a couple other praises before we go to the Lord in prayer. Um, I think most of you, if not all of you, remember Bill Brown. Uh, he was one of our uh, emeritus deacons. Um, his, his daughter Marlene comes to our church. She joined the church after he passed. Um, she works at Memorial at Fort Oglethorpe in the ER. So... Guess who was ministering uh, to Brother Jimmy, Miss Maldi, after I left the hospital? God used a member of this church. The men didn't know Maldi was going to be there. And uh, Brother Jimmy said she was uh, giving him uh, drinks and things to eat and making sure he was okay. And uh, that was one, one praise. And another praise, if you think about this, last Sunday night in our winter Bible study, Brother Jimmy taught us on the model prayer and how important it is to pray. And that is not uh, necessarily a prayer that, that has to come out of our lips every time we pray. But the reason it's a model prayer is because Jesus gave the disciples some uh, things to remember when we pray, but as he was teaching us that, he did. there was no way that he knew before Wednesday night he wouldn't be here and his wife would be at the hospital. Uh, and then, uh, already planned, I was going to do uh, fasting tonight, so if you think about it, it is important that we give alms to help uh, minister to the poor. It's very important that we pray and um, um, and it's also important to fast. Uh, there's individual, and we'll get into it, but there's some individual fasting. Uh, uh, most of the time when you go to the doctor, uh, if you're having a procedure or they're going to check your blood the next morning, what do they tell you to do at midnight? Fast. So that's one reason you fast, but biblically there's some other reasons that we fast, and we'll look at that in a a few moments. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to meet our needs tonight. Father, we thank you so much of what you do in our lives each day. Lord, there, as I just mentioned to our church, there was no way that last Sunday night that we knew that uh, Miss Maldi would be at the hospital tonight, but God, you knew, and Father, uh, as we pray very often when things like this happens, it, does, it never takes you by surprise. But Lord, it was as if uh, last Sunday night that you were preparing Brother Jimmy and preparing our church family on the importance of prayer. 
So God, we do lift uh, Miss Maldi up to you. Lord, pray that whatever's going on physically with her body, God, that you would heal her. I pray, Lord, not just for Miss Maldi, but those, Father, who are sick, um, Gail Cook and others at home, God, when they go to the doctor and the doctor um, uh, takes care of them and the uh, medical staff, uh, God, I know many times when they're carrying out their duties, they're very tired. So, God, I pray that you'll give them the strength that they need. And, Lord, for uh, those that may be facing medical procedures in the upcoming days, I pray, Lord, that you would be with each person. And, Father, I pray tonight as we look into your word, Lord, that you would feed us from your table. Lord, many times we read sometimes uh, scriptures that seems to be repetitive at times, but, Lord, the scripture never gets old to us. And so thank you, Lord, that we have the uh, scripture to comfort us. Uh, Father, for every name that was raised up to you, Lord, I pray that you'll meet every need. And God, I just pray uh, that your will be done in our lives and all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, if you uh, have your Bibles, if you would... um, Please turn to Matthew chapter 6. We're not going to re- reread uh, the things that we have read the previous uh, weeks, uh, but we're going to pray the scripture on fasting. Brother Mark, did you have an update? Okay. After 8. I don't understand it, but oh well. All right, let's just pray that the ambulance would get a hold of their their schedules, all right? Matthew chapter 6, if you'll please stand in in respect to God's word, we'll be looking at uh, Matthew chapter Uh, 6. This is a third example that uh, that Jesus gave, which is on fasting, and then we'll look back, and if you have any questions on about giving alms, uh, pray and fast, and we'll do that. In uh, Matthew chapter 6, uh, beginning in verse uh, 16, uh, Jesus says, Moreover, so that means he was not through teaching on the other two examples he had. He uh, said, When you fast, and by the way, he didn't say if you fast, he said, When you fast. Do not be like the hypocrites. He said the same thing about those that wanted to be seen when they were praying. He called the Pharisees hypocrites. And he said, with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head, and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Then also in your book, we had uh, the section under the concluding exhortation, and that's in verses 19 through 21, and while you're standing, um, this is an introduction to uh, uh, next Sunday night. Jesus says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And by the way, when I was preparing the message for last Sunday, I didn't go far enough to know that Jesus was then, in just a service or two, was going to be talking about money. So anyway, uh, maybe it's a divine appointment, but uh, you may be seated and may the Lord add his blessings on the reading of his word. Uh, You know, I know that the Bible... Uh, was penned by 
uh, godly men inspired by the Holy Spirit. And, and it's like everything, it shouldn't be it's like, but everything that God does, he does in order. And if you think about it, he, he taught us about giving alms before he taught us about praying. And then he saved the fasting after we pray. So um, in all three of these examples, this is the main thing you need to try to grasp hold of. Um, In these three examples, we can either have man's rewards or we can have God's rewards. And in all three of these things, these examples, we're not supposed to give alms and pray and fast uh, for people to see us that we are doing it, other to witness us. And, and if we do, we're no different than the Pharisees that wanted uh, to be seen. So the word that I'm about to give to you came to my mind as I thought to all three of these examples was this. All three of these examples that Jesus gave, they are very important. But there's one word that really sticks with me about all three of these Example. It's our motive. Think about it. What is our motive when we try to, we see somebody in need and we do our best to provide for them that is in need? Same way with praying. When we pray, uh, we are not supposed to pray so that people can see how fancy our words are, but we need, and and Brother Jimmy pointed out Sunday night, that we're to go to our prayer closet in secret because God is the one who is that we are praying to, and we are not, when we're doing our daily prayer time, we are not supposed to be praying for show. Don't pray, uh, don't let your, your, necessarily your spouse or your uh, family member to hear every word that you're praying. Now, um, I pray for Joan every day, but a lot of times during the day, she doesn't hear me praying because I am praying for other people. So what is our motive? Most of the time when I'm praying, well, if I'm, if I'm helping somebody that's in need, my motive is to, whatever they're going through, m- try to help them with their physical need or their material need to try to get them back on their feet. And then my motive is then to share Christ with them and let Jesus shine through us. But we're not to to do it for a show. Now, uh, when Jesus said that we are to go in our prayer closet in secret, um, he's not talking about your bedroom closet at home. Every one of us, as Christians, should have a prayer closet. Now, um, I have more than one prayer closet. Uh, uh, For example, this week, I used one in my study. I used one on the same day in the afternoon at this altar. See, I'm not saying that to... For show, but what I'm saying is sometimes we might limit our prayer closet only to where we, that little small space where we're at, but your prayer closet can be anywhere where you can bring your petitions to God and he is going to reward you in secret. And, and Brother uh, uh, Jimmy also brought out uh, through the model prayer about God's will, praying for God's will to be done. Uh, I had this thought. Uh, Bottom line, I believe that uh, whether we pray or not, God's will is going to be done. But I believe also of seeing God's will to be done or desiring God's will to be done, that we have to be in submission to whatever God's will might be. Uh, Or your surrender. Um, uh, just like uh, 
Uh, I know she's on the prayer list. I don't make mention of her uh, that often, but um, uh, I have a dear sister-in-law that's in stage four cancer. And as I was praying this week in my prayer closet, I said, God, I'm finally at the point of surrender. I'm surrendering her completely over to you, whatever you have for her. But I'm going to tell you, it's hard to surrender, to get to the point of surrender. Now let's get into the third example, fasting. In Christ's third example of what wholeness or true holiness looks like is in our practices. Jesus addresses the practice of fasting. Fasting is the practice of abstaining from food to dedicate oneself to prayer, meditation, and study. Now, I already told you the medical side of the fasting. You need to do what your doctor tells you to do. Anyone who ever decides to go on a um, biblical fast, um, I, I really highly recommend that you go to your doctor first because there might be certain foods that you have to eat every day. And uh, we're going to look at some examples of those who had fasted in the Old Testament and then one in the New Testament. And But I'll tell you this, um, prayer changes things. It changes situations and it changes people. But on a a different level, if you pray and then you go into a biblical fast, what is this is showing to God in secret that you are serious of what you are fasting for. Now, when we think about fasting, we think about uh, abstaining from food. Um, and if you're fasting, by the way, uh, it's not that I'm a a liberal, I'm conservative. But if you can't do without a meal, try this. How many of you ever watch TV in your home? Most of us do, don't we? All right? You probably got your favorite program that you watch, right? Okay. If you can't fast by giving up one of the three meals a day. Give up that 30-minute or the hour TV program. Th that's fasting. Well, the whole TV would be good. But whatever you give up, whatever God wants you to give up, Don't just say, I'm giving up my TV program and I'm going to bed. That's not fasting. What you do, you give up that TV program. I'm just making this an example. You give up that TV program, and then what you do is that time slot that you gave up that TV program, go into your prayer closet and meditate on the Word and have fellowship with the Heavenly Father and spend time with Him. A lot of times, I know I'm, I'm guilty just like anybody else, but a lot of times there are distractions when I'm in my quiet time. I normally keep my phone completely turned off when I'm praying and sometimes even when I'm studying. And, and it's because I don't want any uh, distractions. Um, uh, so whatever you, you give up, uh, you just need to dedicate yourself to prayer and med meditation and study. Many Christians in the modern West do not fast. For many Christians, fasting is a regular habit as it was for the Pharisees. Well, the Pharisees in Jesus' day, uh, they had a routine that they would fast two days each week. 
Jesus expects his disciples to fast because he says, when you fast. Now, if he didn't expect for us as believers to fast, he, he, he could have said, if you fast. But all three of these examples, it's not if, it's when you do. And then, if one fasts to give, gets praise and honor from others, from this, does, this does not please God or result in good for the one that's fasting. Christians should be motivated by receiving God's rewards for their faithful dedication. I just wanted to give you just a few examples um, in Scripture about fasting. And I'm not going to go into a whole deep uh, uh, theological Bible study on these Scriptures, but I've got four or five of them uh, written down. The first one was in 1 Samuel chapter 1, uh, verses 7 and 8 tells us this was when uh, Hannah was married to Elkanah. Elkanah was a husband of Hannah, but he had two wives. The Lord had closed up her womb where she couldn't have any children. And this is what 1 Samuel 1, 7 and 8 says. It says, so it was year by year when she, being uh, Hannah, went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Provoking her would have been Elkanah's uh, other wife. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? And then he asked her a question. Am I not better to you than ten sons? And then in um, and then, then we find out that that she 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 weeped, she didn't eat, she basically was pleading to the Lord to give her a child, and then uh, the story goes on that the priest Eli was in the performance of his duties, and she went where he was performing these duties, and he saw that she was weeping. And later, when she found out that she was pregnant, she went back to the priest and said, I'm the woman that was weeping, and I had a bitterness of tears because I could not have a child. Now, the word fast does not, uh, is not recorded there, but she did something. She gave up, um, she, she weeped, she gave up uh, food, and then, of course, her heart was grieving, and then she was pleading to God, and then uh, God answered prayer. By the way, we serve a God that uh, is in the miracle working business. I mean, um, just like uh, uh, Don this week, you know, some people say, well, that was just an open-heart surgery. Well, open-heart surgery is very serious. And, but when we put somebody on the prayer list and we pray by name for that person, then we, we need to have faith and believe that God is going to hear our, our prayers. And then in 2 Samuel chapter 1, and verse 12, um, David and his crew got word that Saul and Jonathan was both uh, killed by the sword. And 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 12 says, And they mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and for Jonathan his son, for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they have fallen by the sword. And then in 2 uh, Chronicles chapter 20, and verse 3, uh, it says, And Jehoshaphat feared, and set himself to seek the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea. Now, God hadn't told me to present this to you, but I want you to pray about something. We've got a revival starting in almost a month. March the 3rd, tomorrow's February 1st. As Jehoshaphat brought a more of a corporate Fasting, if you've never fasted spiritually for something, 
try to use these next 30 days into not only praying for revival, praying for sick, and praying for the revival and a spiritual awakening, but also give up something that you would normally do, like I said earlier, like a TV program. Most of the time, uh, most things you see on TV is junk anyway, so you shouldn't miss too much. Uh, uh, but when it comes to food, I can tell you when I miss a meal. Uh, but I'll, I'll tell you also that uh, if, if I'm going to miss a meal for the Lord, it's all worth it. Because when you put uh, prayer and you put fasting together, you need to then wait and see what God's going to do. And then in Esther chapter 4 and verse 16, the scripture says, uh, go gather all the Jews. This is what Mordecai was telling and, and Queen Esther was telling um, uh, the group to do what Mordecai, which was a, leader, a Jewish leader, for what he was saying. And this is what he said, go gather all the Jews who are present in Shashan and fast for me, neither eat or drink, for three days, nine or day, my maids and I will fast likewise, and so I will go to the king, which is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. And then we find Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. A 40-day and a 40-night fast. Jesus was just baptized in Matthew chapter 3. Chapter 4 and verse 2, the scripture says, of course, the Spirit led him out into the wilderness. And the scripture says, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. This is why I say you need to talk to your doctor before you go on a long fast. Now what happened? During that 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus spent time with his Father in prayer, preparing for what Satan was going to come and tempt him with. Even though he was partly human, he was also God. And 40 days of fasting day and night is a long time. And, but we know what happened after this. After he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, uh, Satan comes to him, tempts him about all these things he would give to him if he would bow down. But see, Jesus already knew who he was. Why should he bow down to Satan? But see, Jesus had a physically weakness part of his body because of not eating and drinking on a regular basis. Because I'm going to tell you, when you're weak, that is when Satan is going to come and going to tempt you. Now, I just want to share something with you, uh, uh, and, and I'm not taking this. I'm not doing like the Pharisees were doing, but sometimes if we, if we never fasted, we don't know what to expect. Um, uh, years ago, I went on a 40-day a, a fast, it was um, giving up one meal a day. I'm not bragging. I'm just sharing with you a fresh encounter I had with the Holy Spirit. For those 40 days, I left my phone in a vibrate mode. I showed up on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night to preach but I visited nobody, no pastoral visits for 40 days. One reason was because nobody was in the hospital, nobody died, everybody was well. And so what, did, you may say, well, what did you do, preacher? This is what I did. This was seven days a week. On Sunday morning, when I'd get through preaching, I would not eat the lunch meal. When Joan would go home, I would go down to the prayer room. And I probably had four or five different books on fasting. I followed the 
the Dan, what they called the Daniel fast. And during that 40 days, uh, I will say, I didn't really miss a meal. I, I, didn't, I didn't eat that meal. But after a while, I wasn't even thinking about being hungry. At the, it was the same time every day. So I would, I would eat a, not a big breakfast, but, but, but something that would stay with me a little bit. And all during the day, I would drink orange juice and drink bottles of water. And then uh, I kept on bringing gallon jugs of water in the prayer room. I kept on having to go, of course, going to the bathroom several times during the day. When it was time in the late afternoon, about dark, I would then leave the prayer room and I would go home and then I'd take a shower and then I would go to bed. But this is what happened during those 40 days. I thought I knew who God was and how the Holy Spirit worked. But he showed me some things during that 40 days that no other preacher, no other seminary has ever taught me. It was something that I had to learn on myself. But what that fresh encounter was, it was one-on-one -on -one with the Heavenly Father. And by the way, was I weak during that time? Yes, I was weak. Uh, I stayed away from banana pudding, from ice cream, coconut cakes, church events, I didn't know go to any fellowships because I didn't want to be tempted. So uh, you may say, well, I might try this thing of fasting. Well, if you do, once again, uh, go see your doctor first. And the second thing to do, you need to, you need to have a concert of prayer before you go into fasting because if you don't, the enemy is going to come against you while you're fasting, while you're weak, and he's going to tempt you uh, to the far extreme. And then the conclusion, exhortation, verses 19 through 21. God sees and cares about our motives. God wants us to flourish. He wants us to partake in the rewards that come from living according to God's design for our lives. So in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21, Jesus slightly changes the vocabulary from reward. Remember, he was saying reward, either a man's reward or God's reward. He changes um, his vocabulary from reward to treasure. But the point is the same. We must not be so foolish as to live our lives for merely earthly treasures rather than heavenly one. Our problem is that we so often pursue the wrong goods, the wrong rewards, sometimes even the wrong treasures that are temporarily. And the Bible tells us in this passage they are corruptible, there are some that will, are perishing and some that are earthly, but, but our motive again should be on God. Uh, Jesus is using again these three examples in our praise problem to reshape uh, our sensibilities and our practices so that we can resist the temptation to focus only on the outward sets and neglect what God really cares about. And I want to ask you, what does God really care about you? Can you think what God really cares about? Your clothes. Your clothes. Your real clothes. That's it. He wants our heart. And I think when our heart gets completely right, all these other things will fall in place uh, with the biblical standards. Any questions tonight? All right, please... Uh, Continue to remember uh, those that are sick, uh, Miss Maldi in the hospital, and uh, I pray that God's will would be done. And uh, I believe Pat said that uh, the music for Sunday has already been picked out in case Brother Jimmy uh, is at the hospital with Miss Maldi. And uh, 
And I, I did tell him um, uh, today that um, we wanted him here, but his place was to be with her. He just uh, he he just texted. Uh, I think he meant 7:40, but he says uh, now 8:40 p.m. Still waiting. They said they have several to transport to Memorial. And if if it's like it was a couple weeks ago, uh, and on the phone I did uh, mention to Brother Jimmy. I said. Brother Jimmy, last time I was at the ER at Memorial, you couldn't hardly move around so many people there. I said, for your protection and for others, I said, please wear a mask because there's a lot of people with the flu um, uh, virus that's going on, and this is some bad stuff. And uh, some people don't believe in masks, but we just need to do whatever we can to just protect ourselves and protect others all right and I enjoyed my visit with your sister this week too and uh, prayed for her so all right anything else before we dismiss any questions on giving alms praying and fasting out of the three which are more important I would say all three are important or Jesus wouldn't have gave the example. But it's amazing how he did. I, I can not I can believe it, because it's in Scripture, how the writers, they put alms before praying, and then praying before fasting. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for those of you that uh, stayed for the choir rehearsal earlier. And let's just pray what God has in store for us. Yes, sir. Well, if you think about it, uh, the number 40 um, happened quite often in the Bible. Like with Noah, it rained 40 days and 40 nights. Um, um, yes, sir? And if you keep on looking up Scripture, um, Rick Warren brought this out in the Purpose Driven Life about uh, the 40 in Bible um, whoever was going through that, it must have been a symbol of something because that time frame of the 40 uh, uh, was more than once in the Bible. Now, I can't really answer why Jesus chose the 40 days, but if you think about it, uh, let me put it this way. Um, Say, for example, I don't know what Satan's going to tempt me with next month. And Jesus had to know after he got baptized and God saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and getting baptized, that Jesus probably knew that this Satan was going to appear to him going back to the serpent that was in the Garden of Eden. And so Jesus was tempted. Now, if Jesus hadn't spent those 40 days, Jesus could have still done what he did, how when Satan um, uh, confronted him to bow down. Uh, but if you think about it, 40 days is much longer than 10 days. And it probably was that Jesus thought that he was going to need some extra strength to get him through. Even though he was God, he was also man. And like I said, I'm not asking y'all to go do a 40-day uh, fast because I don't want, I'm tired. I don't want to be visiting the hospital every day, okay? Okay, people fainting and passing out and all this other stuff. But you just ask God, if he doesn't want you to fast for a revival, don't fast. 
But if he gave these three examples, they must be important. So, and I've, I've asked him uh, ever since uh, after the lesson Sunday night, I've asked God, I said, God, uh, what do you want me to do to continue to prepare for revival? God, I know I'm praying, but do you want me to do something else? And then it's like, yeah, uh, I want, have you fasted yet? Oh, no, Lord, I hadn't yet. Uh, I'm not ready to give up my supper meal. And then he could say, well, I'm not asking you to give up your supper meal, but I'm asking you to give up something. And whatever time frame that you are doing, whether it's giving up a TV program, don't, like I say, don't give up that TV program and go to bed earlier or at that same time. Don't go to bed, but take that same time frame that you would be watching that program and spend it in your prayer closet and praying and meditating on him and asking him to meet all the desires that you have in your heart. Don't make it hard, please. About water. Well, I'm just saying what the Bible says. And the, the writers didn't go in detail what all Jesus did in that 40 days. But we can just assume he spent that 40 days uh, uh, meeting with his father. Anyone else? All right, let's stand. We'll go home. Jerry, wake up, brother. Enjoyed your singing tonight, Jerry. You did a good job. Robert, would you uh, dismiss us, please?